In October and November of 2006, two separate groups of American Zen practitioners visited China to travel an ancient path. They visited sites that few people have seen, places at the very heart of the Chinese Zen tradition. Among these places was the first ancestor Bodhidharma's famous cave, as well as his recently discovered burial place named Empty Form Temple. In addition, the groups each stayed and practiced for three days at Cypress Grove Monastery, the Grand Temple and ancient Dharma seat of Zen master Zhao Zhou, known in Japanese as Joshu. There, the groups participated in a newly created tea ceremony honoring that famous 9th century master who uttered the words, go drink tea, to monks who asked for instruction. The monastery abbot, Minghai, led the monks, the local lay people, and the Vermont Zen Center in a moving celebration of one of Zen's greatest ancient teachers. Other notable sites lined the path of these groups. Yunju Temple, near Beijing, is where the Buddhist canon was carved into stone to protect it from destruction. This project, because of the extensive nature of the writings, took 800 years to complete. Here was striking evidence of their devotion to the Buddha Dharma by the ancient Chinese people. Hardly less inspiring were the Lungmen Grottoes, where thousands of Buddhas and other Buddhist figures were carved into man-made caves along the Yi River over the course of four centuries. The groups also visited Wild Goose Pagoda, where the great Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang lived in the seventh century after returning from 16 years of travel in India. He brought back many scriptures that helped make Buddhism a great historical force in China. The group saw other astonishing sights, such as the Great Bell Temple of Beijing, where a 52-ton bell was cast from bronze in a single operation over 600 years ago. This amazing ancient bell has 108 Buddhist sutras cast on its exterior and interior surfaces. As thrilling and important as these events were, the American groups were even more moved by their visits to the temples where Zen's second ancestor, Hui Ke, taught and was buried. At Yunfu Temple, site of Hueka's ancient burial pagoda, local villagers turned out by the hundreds to enthusiastically welcome the foreign Zen practitioners. People of all ages came forth to warmly embrace, as brothers and sisters, these groups which had come from afar to honor their common Zen ancestor. In a few amazing moments, divisions of country, culture, language, time and space evaporated as the two groups came together. For many years, Bill Porter and I have traveled the back roads of China to rediscover the treasures of ancient Zen. These discoveries continue and in fact are increasing in pace. We invite you to join us in crossing Zhaozhou's bridge. It still stands ready to convey us to the very old and the very new.